Hello and welcome to another episode of Baka Breakdown with your host Troy and Jason. The show where we take apart favorite anime uh, scenes of ours, tear them apart and see what's inside. This week we'll be taking a look at one of our favorite animes, uh, Made in Abyss. And of course, uh, it's, we're going to have spoilers. I wanted to take another look at this anime. I, kind of. It's so heart-wrenching. Um, but this scene, there was just so much growth in so many areas. And it was sad, but great at the same time, but awful. I just, I kind of want to take a moment to appreciate the episode. So in this scene... We have a lot going on. Uh, Troy, I know this particular anime you weren't excited to go and review a scene from again. But as far as thematically, like, this fits so well into the story. But I think there's a lot of heart here uh, that might get missed on first viewing, even though there's a lot of it you are going to get. What, what are your thoughts? First off... I will never forgive you for making me watch this. As much as I love Maiden Abyss, I swore I would never go back and rewatch this season because of how hard it is to watch. And you picked one of the hardest scenes. Uh, but you're absolutely right. There's, there's a ton to unpack. Um, so I really focused uh, in my viewing on Nanachi and the theme present with her relationship with Midi. And it, it really said a lot to me about letting go and saying goodbye um, of of a relation that, that's really close. And, and as, as horrific as the death and the situation that we're shown here is, um, I really focused on that aspect of it, of having the strength, the courage, the will to say goodbye when it's the best thing to do and how hard that can be. I 100% agree with that. And... The reason I asked about specifically the theme is not only is that what we do and unpack in this show, but to this point, we've had just awful thing after awful thing after awful thing happen. And our characters, you know, in every situation are just rising to meet the challenge the best they can. Sometimes it doesn't work out too well for them. <laughs> this time we have a terrible thing happen for all the right reasons and all the right intentions and just making a really awful situation um, make it out to be the best they can. And I think that's why it's a little different than the rest of what we've been shown is that, you know, we've, we've had this mission, we've had this um, determination and in this moment, we get to show a level of mercy and dignity uh, that I don't think the rest of the show shows. But there was... Uh, this one was rough to talk about. Um, before he commits the act, he makes Nanachi promise him that she won't commit suicide after he leaves. Nanachi, you that was rough, but I think the reason I bring it up is I want to get your thought. Like, do you think that was a cruel request, or do you think? That was a caring request. I mean, in this situation, you got to figure that it's probably a little bit of both. I mean, there's, <laughs> it's cruel in the sense that she now has to accept a world without her friend. Um, I, there's definitely a, a knowledge between the characters that is was her plan is is to to leave, and so now. When she has to say goodbye to her friend, she has to keep on going without that presence. Um, I also found it really visually interesting that the, he says this to her while she's fishing. And while she's fishing, she pulls the lure out of the water to check it, sees nothing there, and then has to throw it back in, which 
really speak to me about having to wait. You know, she's going to have to wait to see her friend. Um, you know, and even though her friend's now going on, it doesn't mean she gets to have that catharsis that she needs either. I 100% agree with what you're saying there. Um, it really reinforces the idea that one of the only escapes to this place is death. Uh, and that these characters don't have a lot to look forward to except going down. And well, she's been from down there, so that's not a place she wants to go, but she ends up going with them anyways. But one of my favorite things about this scene is that we see it from Reg's viewpoint. Um, while that brings a huge element of mystery to it. And I, I mean that in a way where, He's not 100% sure he's doing the right thing. He's not even sure Mitty is as suffering as bad as Nanachi thinks he is. We're being told from Nanachi's point of view how things are going. And even when he goes to do the act, Nanachi screams out, you know, wait, I was wrong. Um, and he doesn't know what that means. And neither would we as the audience. We have to wait to find out. And it's such a tense moment already to have so much uncertainty and we're right there with reg going through that uncertainty, even though it's these two other characters that this is really impacting. Um, I also want to get your thought. What about um, Rico when she finally wakes up and learns about this? She seems to take it in stride, um, but she doesn't really address it. And I'm not sure because it seems like uh, meaty, visited her in her dream to keep her company but it it really seems like she she was almost proud of Rico for uh going through with these motions yeah uh, one thing i think is that the, probably the person who needed this lesson the most this character growth is the one who missed out on it um if someone needs to know about letting go or saying goodbye to something or maybe giving up on an obsession, it's probably Rico. <laughs> Absolutely. The music itself, that almost brings you to tears along with the visuals. Uh, that close up of Reg as he's charging up his cannon uh, is beautiful and terrible all at the same time um i really appreciated the camera work as far especially in the fishing scene but the choice of music wasn't so heart-wrenching that it was cheesy but it was just, it felt it felt right for what was trying to be told here absolutely and and even the music during the fishing scene um that was the one that really struck me um as big as the other scene is because it's like this very light um, notes that, you know, very, very high, very high notes that kind of represents these two young characters talking to each other. But there's this heavy note that comes in at a steady beat in between it. And it, it's like this horrible thing that they're both committing to. It's coming. Can't get away from it. Boom, boom boom um, and then the music goes silent as reg is warming up and getting ready and then when now she has her breakdown and, and and finally accepts the emotion of the decision she's committing then the music comes flooding back in and that, that's the music you mentioned and how emotionally overpowering it is it, it's it's interesting because this is the last episode in the season and we don't have a season two yet. So I was wondering, do you, how, how is this going to affect this trio as they continue down into the abyss? Um, do you think this is going to be a contention that's, can, that's brought up again? Do you think uh, Nanachi is going to have a chance to heal from this? Because uh, right off the bat, you know, we get this scene of them taking care of uh, Rico and rehabilitating her. But then they're, they're off to go down deeper. There's, there's worry I have for Nanachi. You know, she agreed not to take her life, but she didn't agree to exactly protect it. And they are heading into danger. Uh, 
But I, I, I think that theme of letting go and saying goodbye and how hard that is, is is going to play into their future as these guys are are tested um, and trying so hard to stay together. There might be situations where that's not the best choice or even the goal itself is what they need to say goodbye to. I definitely think this theme is going to come back. I think there's even harder decisions in their future. I really agree with that because, I, like you said earlier, the person that needed this lesson the most was missed out on it. And Reg didn't. And there may come a point later in the next season, if there is another one, that Reg's going to see that there, this is a point where we have to let go. And she's not going to be ready, or she's at least not going to have learned that lesson yet. Um, at least that's my theory. Yeah, I agree. I think this anime changed my perspective on storytelling and also what's possible in the medium. Uh, but also what's possible as far as a story storytelling standard, especially compared to another anime we watched recently that was on another podcast. So speaking of our podcast, oh, Troy, do you have any other thing? <laughs> any other thoughts? Uh, just that one of my favorite things about this entire anime is the, the, the contrast of the visual style and the heavy drama and mature content. Um, and how that plays into the dread it builds. And it, like you said, I, I learned a lot from that anime when we watched it. And, and that was one of the things that don't judge books by their cover. So uh, currently uh, in our main podcast, however, uh, we are currently watching that time. I got angry. Yes. Yes. And we're finishing up the last half which is episodes 14 through 23. There's 24 and 25, but those are fillers or OVAs. OVAs. I, I didn't watch them. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. But uh, if you want to hear us talk about that time I got reincarnated as a slime, uh, head on over there, and we look forward to seeing you next uh, Baka Breakdown. Uh, if you enjoyed what you saw here, please uh, feel free to give us a like and don't forget to subscribe. With that, Troy, let's say goodbye. Sayonara. Thanks for listening.